Today we're installing a cold pipe intake which is opposite to the hot side and we're replacing it for a better one because the one in there is not good. What is going on here? As Lockie was just saying, we are going to be installing a new pipe onto the engine. We already did the hot pipe over this side, went through some leaks, went through how to replace it. If you haven't seen that video, you can click right here and you can check that one out. There is another pipe that does need replacing because it is prone to having some issues as well, which we will go over later in the video. But that pipe is the throttle body pipe. More, more boost. boost. Awesome bit of gear, also from CRG, and much like the same one over here with the hot pipe, it's all aluminium, it's fully welded up, it's got all the brackets on here, but it also has some extra bracketry to make the factory Nissan things a little bit better because as I said, the Nissans aren't perfect, they're close to perfect, but they're not quite there yet. So I'm gonna throw this one on, and the reason why I'm doing all of these upgrades is not only to help with the boost leaks that are present on these engines, and they can progressively get worse, but is also to make it more reliable for an engine tune, which I'm about to do. Make sure that all of the seals are nice and tight, things aren't going to crack, and I'm going to get the most performance out of my engine as possible. So I've got the nav up on the hoist. It's for no other reason than just to get some good camera angle for you guys. So. You can definitely do this at home, in the driveway, in the garage, on the ground, using a jack or whatever you need. So over here, there's the first bolt that we need to undo, which is actually a hose clamp. So if you go onto the passenger side of your vehicle, right next to your alternator, straight underneath it, there's your hose clamp right there that we need to undo. That is a seven mil bolt. So you just need to grab a seven mil socket. If you've got an electric ratchet, it will really help here. Otherwise a uh, hand ratchet will be fine as well. This hose clamp is now good to move down the pipe. And I don't know if you can see it easily there, but I've just pulled that hose off the plastic throttle body, which is down, down there. So what we do with this hose, once we've got it off, is just tuck it in front of the alternator. And that way it's not going to be in the way of the job that we're doing. If the camera sees down in there, you can see the throttle body, plastic throttle body, the end of it. So that's one end. Now we've got to work on undoing the other end. So to make the job a little bit easier, you can take off your wheel as we've already done it, and you can take off the inner panel, your inner guard panel right here. So to do that, you've got a couple of plastic clips around the trim. Flat blade screwdriver will get those off, no worries at all. Those plastic clips there. And then you have some Torx head bolts around the outside. They're T20 Torx bolts or screws. Undo those ones. And then there's a Phillips head screw down the underside here. And now, with all of those out, with any luck, this should all come out. I used to go to wrecking yards to get these clips. Now, most parts stores just sell them on the shelves on those little rotating racks. And uh, yeah, you can just break as many as you want. You can replace them. But yeah, I used to painstakingly go to a wrecker, find the clips and screws and everything that I wanted. And uh, then I'd replace the broken ones. But now you can get them off a the shelf. So when we're on the top side of the engine bay and I was talking about moving the hose that we took off the throttle pipe in front of the alternator, this is what I meant. So that's just to give you guys some reference to where we're at, that's the hose there that we took off the pipe and it's just tucked in front of the alternator there resting so it doesn't get in our way for this install. Now tucked in behind here is the throttle pipe that we're going to be working on removing. We'll get to try and get some light in there. It's really hard to see in here guys, it's quite tight. So that's the end that we took the hose off and this is the other end that connects up to the engine's intake. I'll point to it now. So first thing we're gonna do is on the throttle body pipe, there is an air sensor clip right here. So grab yourself something to pull the retaining clip off. Once you've got that clip off, you can literally just pull it off like that really easily. Okay, so the next thing to do is there's a bolt just down here. It's really hard to see, but it's on the bottom of the throttle pipe, pretty much directly underneath the alternator. So we need to undo that one. So use a 13 mil ring spanner to loosen the bolt off. 
Once you get this to a certain point, you should be able to start undoing it with your fingers. That might be it. Yep, that's it. Sweet. Can you see the bolt? Yep. <laughs> Ta-da. Ta-da. <laughs> that's it. Now that you've got that bolt off, which was an absolute pain in the ass, it is time to get the <laughs> clip off the top of the throttle pipe. So if you've watched the hot pipe video that I did, this is an exact clip like what was on that one. So you need a flat blade screwdriver and you can get up in here. You can see that metal clip right there. And you just get your flat blade screwdriver underneath it. And when it makes that noise and it pops open like that, you are good to go. So what we need to do now is manhandle this thing. So get in there and give it a good wiggle. And that actually comes off pretty easy once you successfully get that metal clip out of the way. We should be able to pull it back through here. So before we start talking about the new throttle body pipe, we're going to talk about the original one, the OEM one that we just pulled from the Navara. So this pipe does have a few faults and I'm gonna talk about them now. So first things first, the mounting tab, that one right there, is plastic welded to the main pipe body. That can break and does break. I'll actually overlay a video now of one that's broken off and what that creates is a hole in this pipe, which means it's going to be le leaking boost pressure and oil through that hole, and that's just not good. It creates all sorts of problems. The other issue that is fairly common with these is the air temp sensor, that one right there. It's actually just glued into the pipe body, and over time with heat going through here, oil, diesel oil going through, it breaks down the glue, and that can actually come away from the pipe itself and then you don't have an air temp sensor. So the ECU, the engine's brain, then doesn't have the reading that it needs to tell it what's going on. So it jumps into limp mode. And you might find then that the vehicle feels like it's lacking power. And a common thing that pops up on the forums is boost solenoids being an issue. And the engine drops power, it starts going into limp mode. But what you'll find is a lot of the time it's actually this guy right here that's fallen out and causing your issue. So there's a few faults unfortunately with these factory OEM pipes exactly why we're going to move over to the CRG pipe and upgrade it so that it's more reliable for both touring and just general driving. The other thing that we need to do is take off the snap ring, the metal snap ring there. So to do that, you just need to cut off this plastic retainer and then you just simply need to remove the snap ring out of the pipe. And we're going to reuse this in the new one. So that's it there. So starting up this end, we have the CNC machined end right here. Moving over here, that's the new provision for the air temp sensor, and it has a mounting screw that holds it into place. It's no longer relying on glue to do the job. So that's a good upgrade. All the welds look really nice along this pipe as well. That's the mounting bracket, which is an upgrade over the one here that's just uh, plastic welded. This one's properly welded, and it's not going to go anywhere or break off. On this end, because there's a rubber hose that goes over here, it's just B-rolled. So that goes over and the hose clamp fits back on and it's actually even got a better bead roll in the factory one, so a better lip for the hose to grip over. So this pipe's not only an upgrade for all those features, but it also is going to put up with more boost pressures and just generally more pressures after you do an engine tune and you're you know, asking more from this pipe, more than the factory one can handle basically. So really good upgrade. What we're going to do now is go ahead and change over a few things. So first things first, grab your snap ring. That one there we pulled off the factory pipe. And that goes in with the two tangs on the ends facing downward on the pipe itself. That end slips into there. And then these ones clip in like that. Now if you don't have adequate spring tension on these, which that one definitely does, just give it a little bit of a squash. So when you put it in, it snaps into place and you know when you pop it back on, it's going to grip on firmly. The other thing that we need to do is get the air temp sensor out of the factory pipe, that one there. To do that, you need to grab a six millimeter socket Put it inside, so it's, it's fairly hard to see, but there's a little tab right inside there. And if you put the socket over that and push forward while pulling from this end, it should pop off like that. So I'll show you here, it's a little bit easier. So there's some plastic clips there. When you put the six millimeter socket over those, it squashes them down and you can pull it out nice and easily. So that's that done. Now we need to put this back into the new provision on the CRG pipe, just gonna wipe my hands. Grab your air temp sensor and just pop it in. So this is the direction that we've got the pipe at the moment. And you want to pop it in. Might be a little bit tight. Give it a little bit of a wiggle and push down at the same time. And you want to face it about there. 
grab the screw, get that one started by hand first, grab your Phillips head screwdriver, and then start doing it up. And once you get to about there, twist the sensor all the way around to that point, almost vertical, and then finish doing it up. Now this is doing up onto the plastic body of the sensor so you don't have to go overly tight. Right about there I reckon we'll do it. It's purely just holding it in place. That's a lot better than glue. Check for the seal inside here and make sure that it has grease on there. CRG should have provided that fitted with grease so you won't have to do anything, but just make sure it is there because if it isn't, it could cause you some issues. So that's it. It is now ready to install into the MP300. So let's get stuck into the install. This is not going to be very enjoyable to show you guys how to do it. It's a little bit of a wiggle to get this pipe into position. So we're starting with it like this, right here. And we've got some hoses that we're going to work our way around. So I'm going to go in behind this hose here. And then down a little bit. And it's all a bit of wiggling going on here, just to try and get it into the position that it needs to go in. There we go. So the position that I've got the throttle body pipe in at the moment is there's a mounting tab on the pipe that goes back onto the metal bracket with the bolt, like the factory one that we removed. Push that metal tab past the mounting bolt location and that's the only way that you can get this wiggled on to the intake. So you can see in here, the pipe is floating around a little bit and I'm at the actual side of the intake there. Now the pipe is sitting, the throttle body pipe is sitting a little bit off the intake and we need to get the bottom of the pipe on first. So the, the bottom of the seal on first before we start pushing it forward onto the intake. So you can kind of see how I have it angled here. That's how you have to start. So start the bottom first like that and then roll it over, roll it forward and then wiggle and push at the same time, like that. And that made a good clipping noise that you probably didn't hear because I was talking, but it's now installed onto the intake. So what I'm going to do, and you'll be doing this on the ground, so I'm going to come in from the bottom, the same way that we removed it, I'm going to put the bolt back in. And I'm just going in through the lower control arm, and you can probably get this one almost all the way by hand if you've started the thread correctly many years later. Once that's close, you can go ahead and grab your 13 mil spanner, give it a couple of turns. You don't need to over tighten this. You just need to go until it's firm. I'll give it a little bit more. That's all it needs. So that bolt's now on. You can see that I didn't tighten it up too much. I didn't over tighten it. You don't want to squash that bracket or snap the bolt. So once it was firm, I just gave it another half turn. That's it, that's all it needs. All that's left to do now is to get the sensor plug back on. So you had that clip that we took off. That one there. So that just needs to go back onto the plug. So that's the clip now mounted and you'll be able to push it straight back on. Just like that. All right, you bunch of mad dogs. All that's left to do to finish up this install is getting the rubber hose back on to the other end of the throttle pipe. So, it's that one there that we pushed in front of the alternator. Just grab that and get one side started. Get it over the bead rolled edge. And then just start wiggling it the rest of the way. Like that. And you don't want to have excess tension on this pipe. You don't want it to be squished either, so we need to go a little bit further. And you'll start to feel when it's actually in a position where it's happy, it won't want to be pushed on any further. So once you've got it to that point, grab the hose clamp and a seven mil socket and tighten that one back up. That's actually a really good display of that new bead roll being so much better. I can't get that hose clamp, which was really loose on the factory one, back over that bead rolled edge. So I need to loosen this off a little bit to get it over. If you guys are worried about how far you're pushing the hose on the new pipe, have a look at the old one. You can always just take a measurement there. There's the old bead roll that they had on there. They've got a bump stop. The CRG one doesn't. Um, but yeah, literally just about that far. Make sure you put the clamp here, not on the bead roll, because yeah, it won't seal if you put it on there. 
and that's done. So you just wanted to tighten down the hose clamp to where the rubber hose starts bulging around the outside of the metal clamp itself. Once you got it to that point, you're done. You'll actually feel it when you start tightening down, it gets firm. Just go probably another two or three turns from there. Check to make sure that the hose is bulging around that clamp. Perfect, you don't have to over tighten it. I hope this video showed you how to install this yourself at home and if you don't want to do this yourself you can get in contact with Chris at CRG he can install it for you in the shop if you're not in Queensland where Chris is located you can call him and see if you've got someone in your area that can install this for you so there's definitely some options out there but with a good installation video like this showing you guys how to do it you can have a crack at it yourself at home if you're confident you can literally do this in your driveway it didn't take us that long to do um, a, ja a jack, a couple of stands, some basic hand tools, you can install this yourself and it, it really isn't that hard. If you've got a mate to do it with you, it's just going to make it that bit easier. You definitely don't need a hoist to do this. Like I said at the start of the video, the hoist is purely just so I can get those camera angles for you guys and work a little bit easier. Because filming this can be a little bit difficult trying to get into those tight spots. That um, throttle body pipe is factory plastic, so it is more prone to fail. And that air intake sensor that I showed you guys, if that comes out, it puts the engine into limp mode. So the hot pipe, if that has a little bit of um, a little bit of leaking past that seal, boost leak and oil leaking past, it's not going to stop the vehicle from doing what it needs to do. It just won't be performing as well. So in my opinion, I know I did the hot pipe video first, but in retrospect, I think the better part to install first is the throttle body pipe. I think that is something that if you're not sure which one to do and you've got a budget and you can't do both, definitely do the throttle body pipe first and then move on to the hot pipe. But it is recommended to do both of them. I think that definitely it is worthwhile to do both so you stop those leaks, get the most from your engine. And if you are going to tune your engine to have a little bit more power going through all those components, they're going to perform and you don't have to stress about them failing. As always guys, thanks for checking out this video. If you have any questions, you can drop them in the comment section below. I will reply. If you enjoyed the video, and you enjoyed Lockie being in the video, because Lockie is a massive legend, you can drop the video a thumbs up. I appreciate it. And if you haven't already, you should have, but if you haven't, you need to hit that subscribe button, guys. Smash that subscribe button now. It will let you know as soon as I drop a new video. I have a question, Joel. What's the question? Do you have some more videos coming out? I have so many videos coming out. <laughs> so if you subscribe to the channel, it'll let you know as soon as I drop a video. That's it. That's it. That's a wrap. High five. <laughs> Yoo hoo! That was a good one. That was a good one. Push it to the limit, we can't go no more. Red light, no way I'm coming back home. Long dirt road all on my own. I'ma be the greatest, draw my name in the stone. Draw my name in the stone. Yeah, I'm coming back.